Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at how to program behaviors so that we can move layers around inside of After Effects and trigger animation. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to make behaviors and different things based off of distances between objects. In Cinema 4D, this is kind of like effectors and their fall off. And uh, we're basically recreating that inside of After Effects. So here you can see we have this uh, Apollo command module very wildly inaccurately going around the moon by burning here, which would actually just shoot it off past the moon down this way probably. But you know, that's, uh, that's kind of what I made. So this is the first thing I kind of think of. I was trying to make something kind of related to the moon landing since that was the 50th anniversary and I had just watched the new Apollo 11 documentary, which I highly recommend if you haven't seen it. I'll leave a link to that below. Um, it might be an affiliate link. I don't know if I can set one of those up quickly enough, but if I can, you know, you can want to see it and chip in a couple of uh, pennies this way, then definitely check that out. Anyway, it has these kind of graphics that are similar to this. So I thought I'd play around with that theme and see what I could do with it. They had this thing where it lit up red when they were doing a burn and all that kind of stuff. And I thought that'd be kind of cool to base it off the distance of the moon. Now, if you really wanted to get into it, you could calculate the angle between the command module here and the moon. And then you could actually probably figure out where the actual burn should occur. But this thing just bases it off a distance. So as you can see, as we get a little bit closer here, it starts to burn. And it keeps maintaining that same distance until we start to leave over here. So then it goes away. That's a pretty simple example. I just want you to see kind of what's possible with this. So we're going to keep moving. As always, if you want to know more about the other stuff that's in this project file, you can grab the file from our website for a dollar. So this is the next thing I built, and I'm calling it Zeus, because you got to go one step up into the future. But in Zeus, you have this weird spaceship that's kind of like a Batman looking thing. And as it goes through all these asteroids, which hint, hint, are actually the moon again. So anyway, as Zeus moves through here, we have the asteroids move out of the way. They only move vertically at this point. So I was just kind of working on how a system would work. So the next thing we can take a look at, and here we'll actually check out this example, is that we have this moon here, and we have all of these circles around. If you really wanted to get fancy, I guess they could be phases of the moon, but I didn't think of that, and uh, so we're not going to do that. So I'm going to turn this guy off, which apparently is not locked anymore. Now we're going to grab this guy, and as we go closer, you can see these start to scale up. This happens a little bit more real time, but as I'm recording right now, it slows it down a little bit. So that's accomplished with a pretty simple expression. So let's open that up in Expressionist over here. We're going to hit EE on one of these guys and pop this up. It's only three lines, so it's not very complicated. We're going to set D for distance equal to length, and that's a function here. And that length function takes two points to give us a distance between them. And so we're going to take this layer dot position, which is this layer's position, and we're going to look at the moon layer. So this comp dot layer moon dot position. That's going to return us a distance, and then we're going to set S equal to E's as that distance goes from 100 to 300. So technically, as we get farther away, this thing is gonna scale down. So we're gonna go from 80 in our scale to 30. 30 is where they're all at right now. While it may seem unintuitive to ease as we get further away from the object, I think ease and linear both expect the input range to be linear now, like in order, instead of inverted. I think that worked that way in the past, but it doesn't seem to anymore. And then you can see we're just passing in S comma S because we have a scale and it needs two values. And we just take that thing, right click on that guy, copy expression only, and paste it to the scale on all of the other nodes. And then we can move this thing around and get a macOS dock in space. Maybe it's a macOS space dock. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am a dad. All right, so continuing on, uh, this is the final one. This is pretty cool. It's the Zeus orb. So as you can see here, Zeus over here had a deflector shield, and that's why it was able to get through this stuff pretty easily. Yeah, I know that's not how a deflector shield works, but hey, come on, give it to me. All right, so then we have Zeus Orb over here, which you can tell is more advanced because we have these little numbers over here. And look how this thing introduces itself. Isn't that fancy? So it doesn't move around or do anything at the moment because we don't have anything keyframed. But if we take this guy and we move him around in here, you can see that now we have matter rejection. So I'm calling it. It's the future. I get to name it since I invented it. So anyway, here we go. We got this guy in the middle. And what's extra cool about this thing is that we have a radius for this thing's shield. Right, these little pulses that come out, not that one, but you know, these little red pulses, right? They keep these asteroids away and they can actually be strengthened. So we can actually make them go really far away and shoot everything away. Or if you're really fancy, you could use this as an attractor kind of setup. And maybe we'll do that in the future. I have an idea on how to use that and maybe we'll do that next time. 
But for now, I'm just going to undo. We'll go back to 250. That's a good, good size right there. And we'll move this back over here. And we will click on one of these asteroids and we'll pull up this position and put that into Expressionist and we'll take a look. It's pretty similar to what we did before, but just has a couple of added things to it. So the first thing is we're going to set a variable R and that's going to be a radius. This is going to be the desired distance that we want to keep between these, I almost called it Zorb. Man, Magic the Gathering coming back. Anyway, we're going to keep the desired radius between the Zeus orb and our asteroids. So each asteroid here is built similarly to the moon. It actually is the same moon texture. It just has a bunch of different things on it to make this texture. CC sphere, find edges, displacement map. That uses itself so that we kind of get everything to have a little bit more of a rocky appearance than the normal moon, which that actually is on the previous moons too, but it's not as crazy. And turbulent displace is what we're using to distort these things into different shapes. But mainly we're setting this variable equal to our CC sphere radius, which is up here. And then to that, we're going to add that shield radius. And that's going to be our desired radius to keep our distance between these asteroids. So point A is going to be set to this layer dot position. So that's the asteroids position. Point B is going to be set to the Zeus orb position. And then we're going to calculate our distance the same way as before by feeding it those two points, point A and point B. Then we need to calculate our angle. So that's the angle between the Zeus orb and the asteroid. So to do that, we're going to subtract the Zeus orb position from the position of the asteroid. So we're going to do the X values first. We're going to do X equals point A zero minus point B zero, and then Y equals point A one minus point B one. So then we have the average X value and Y value in between the two points. So then we're going to use the arctan function. That's a tan two here. And initially when I actually had to re-record this whole back part because I set this thing up incorrectly. For some reason, this is Y before X. So make sure not to mess that up. So we're going to get an angle and we're going to set that equal to math.atan2 y comma x. All right, so then we have a simple check here if our distance is less than the radius. So if we're too close for comfort, we're going to set x equal to math.cosine of a and y equal to math.sine of a. And as we've seen before, that's going to give us a range from negative 1 to 1. So then we're going to set r equal to r minus d. That's going to help us ease into our desired radius. r equals r minus d basically makes it so that as our radius and our distance become closer to each other, we're only maintaining the gap that we have. So we're not going to add on the whole radius again, because that would really put things too far away. And then as soon as we get back out, things will just pop back into where they were. So this makes sure that as things get closer, they gain to save that distance. So basically what's going to happen is as our distance becomes closer to our desired radius, we're going to affect this less. So we're not going to push the asteroid as far away. We have to make this a function of distance because we're doing this check because we're not just constantly maintaining that distance away. We're just making sure that that's at least that far away. To better explain that, I'm going to go in here quickly and we're going to change this so that we're just going to set R equal to R. Take away that D there. Hit escape. I hate that autocomplete sometimes. All right, so now this asteroid is over here because now all we're doing is multiplying and adding that radius constantly. So if we take this and we move it, you can see it's going to maintain that distance, but as soon as we get to a certain point, boom, pops back. We don't want that. So having it gradually add that radius to it lets that part ease. So let's add that back, R minus D, escape out of there, hit enter, and now we're back to a normal setup. I'm going to undo, just get that back into position. We're going to do value, and to that we're going to add X times R and Y times R. Sine and cosine both give us a range from negative one to one. So we're going to multiply that by our desired radius so that we make sure that that radius is maintained. Now, if our distance is outside of that range, we don't really want to calculate anything else. So all we do is just go to value. If you really wanted to make this thing efficient, which I apparently did not do, you could take this out of here and I'll put this in the file at the end too. Make sure we don't do all of these checks because you don't really need them all in there. We really need to just know is D less than radius. So now we can just do all those checks in here. So let's click here. We're going to add that. And we are going to right click on this guy, do copy expression only, close that, select all the rest of the asteroids or just all the asteroids anyway, and paste. And now it might be a little quicker. Still should do the same thing. Let's just test everything real quick. Boom. Everything goes away. Boom. Sonic boom. Sonic boom. Oh, not 2,500. That's a little too far. 250. Bring that back. Bring our Zeus orb back over here. So the only other thing you really need to know about this thing is that since we're using turbulent displace to make these asteroids, you just need to hit Y and use the pan behind tool so you can recenter the anchor point. 
You just want it to be centered in your object so that the positions of the radiuses and stuff all work out so that everything does not collide. Of course, having that shield distance too also helps that out. Anyway, that's it. The possibilities with this are pretty much endless, so I hope you guys can find something cool to use this on. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.